Hi, my name is Nathan. This is Nice at Dice, and today I am playing a game called Chronicles of Crime. And this game, which is uh, played with a combination of cards and a app that assists you in playing the game, uh, is really integral to playing the game. Uh, in this game, you are a detective, where you can play multiple players cooperatively as a group of detectives, and you're investigating a crime. Uh, the crime is, it, the game is very narrative driven, um, so you're going to choose a scenario, you're going to play through that scenario. Each scenario is uh, different from the other scenarios. Uh, it's completely pre-written, so it's not uh, randomized in any way. And uh, there's a definite solution to the case that you're investigating. And uh, basically, uh, you go around, you investigate crime scenes, you look for clues, you interview suspects or witnesses to try and get uh, evidence, and once you think you have figured out the solution to the case, you go back to HQ and you go through a series of questions about the case, and depending on how you answer those questions, the game will tell you if you have correctly solved the case or not. So that's basically what the game is. I'm going to play through um, one of the scenarios. And so uh, a couple of disclaimers here. One is, of course, um, that there will be spoilers in this video for that particular scenario. The scenario that I'm going to be playing is called Devil's Kitchen. So if you haven't played that scenario yet and you think that you might, uh, you probably want to skip this video because I'm definitely going to be spoiling it. Uh, however, if you maybe have never played this game before, uh, you haven't played that particular scenario, you don't think that you will play that particular scenario. Uh, this hope video will hopefully give you a good idea of what it's like to actually play the game, um, and you'll get to enjoy, you know, the story of this particular scenario, and kind of follow along with me as I try to solve it. Uh, so that's the first disclaimer. The second disclaimer is that um, the scenario in question has a parental advisory which says scenario contains graphic content. Um, just about every scenario in this game has a similar uh, parental advisory. And what I have found so far for that to mean is basically in some of the images of the crime scenes, um, there's going to be blood. Um, some of the, the themes of the story as it comes out might be a little bit on the gruesome side um, or perhaps a little scandalous. But it's basically been about what you would expect from like a television crime drama story. So that being said, um, I do not know the specific contents of this actual scenario, but that's been my experience with the scenarios overall. So perhaps you may decide that this isn't for you because of that content. Um, but if not, then uh, I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to walk you through just a little bit of how the game works in general in case you're not familiar with it. And then uh, we'll get right into the scenario. So let's go to the desk and get started. Okay, so this is the setup for the game. You have this board here where you're going to track relevant clues. You have this section down here where you're going to put people of interest um, that you don't know where they are. And then you have spots along the edge of the board where you're going to place locations. There's one location that starts in play, Scotland Yard, that's your home base. And then you have over here four different experts. You have a criminologist, a doctor, a scientist, and a hacker. And you can go to them to ask questions at different points in the game um, to get additional information. Now we're going to start by reading the introduction. And I'll just show you real quick on my phone. This is generally basically what the app looks like. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and read off the introduction here. It says June 7th. It's 10 a.m. And the chief officer, and you notice it has a little person symbol here with a number after it, that's 37. So we have a deck of uh, character cards that are all numbered. We're going to find number 37. All right, there he is. And this is just a little thing I like to do is have a pad of little sticky notes on hand. I tuck one under the bottom of the character, like so, and make a note on it so I remember who this person is. And he is the chief officer. All right, 
like so. And he's going to be located in Scotland Yard. So we'll just put him right there where you can see him. All right, so let's go back to the story. June 7th, it's 10 a.m., and the chief officer is furious. At 8 a.m. this morning, the world-renowned chef, Akira Ajiko, was found dead in a filthy alley in Lambeth. So, now we've got our second character involved here. That's number 30. All right, here we go. That's the chef. And he was found, well, let's go ahead and label him real quick. So I'm going to label him Chef, so I remember what the relevance of him is, and his name. Akira and Chico, like so, all right? So we're going to put him here because he isn't really in a location per se. Um, however, he has been, his body was found in Lambeth, which as you can see on the app, there's a uh, little location symbol right there with a letter after it. The letter is C. So we have these different locations. They all have a letter. So we're going to pull out letter C. All right. So this location is here, and we want to make a little note here. Um, this is uh, the crime scene. Okay. All right, and let's see how the story continues. His wife, Shannon, has been informed she's at their Soho restaurant, which is the same location. Oh, you know what? I got something messed up. I skipped ahead at some point and didn't realize it. So this is the crime scene was here in Lambda. All right and their restaurant is here in Soho. All right, and his wife is number one. Okay, and her name is Shannon. Huh. Well, she looks a good bit younger than him and not that there's any reason to judge for that, but I know how these kinds of stories tend to work and it makes me immediately suspicious of his younger wife. Okay, so she's there at the restaurant and she's been informed. It seems that a well-known blogger called Food Detective wants to go viral by finding the murderer first. Solve this case as quickly as possible to keep the police from looking foolish. All right, so let's see, 34 is this person. Food detective. So let's label him. Okay, so this is another character that we don't know where he is, but he may be relevant to the game. Okay. Um, so, what do we want to do? So now you see it's giving me this thing where I can basically scan something. All the cards have these little QR codes. So, um, I'm currently at the at Scotland Yard so I can go up here and I can hit solve the case if I think I can solve the case but I'm pretty sure I can at this point um, or I can scan another location to go to that location and once I'm at that location I can scan people to talk to them so uh, at this point what's the most pertinent thing to do I could ask I could go here and I could talk to the wife 
I could go here and investigate the crime scene. I could talk to any one of my experts about maybe any of these people, um, you know, that I don't know anything about yet. I could, since I'm at Scotland Yard, I could talk to the chief officer and just see if he has any info. The, in my experience so far, the chief officer rarely has any useful information for me. Um, hmm. Well, I think probably the crime scene is a good place to start. So let's see if we can go to the crime scene. All right. It says the small alley where Chef Ajiko's body was found. You should check that the murderer hasn't left a trail to follow. Okay, so now I have this other option, which is search for clues. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's going to tell me to turn my phone sideways like this. And then I'm going to hit start. And then I'm going to be able to kind of look around the crime scene and see what I find. So let's get to it. Okay, yep, definitely looks like a dirty alley. I see some car keys, I see some notes. Um, anything else of interest? Looks like there's something in the garbage there, but I can't quite make it out. There's the body, there's blood on the body, there's a bag. Hmm. Oh, there's a knife. Let me look up real quick. Oh, it looks like there's a camera, maybe? That might be a camera. So that could be useful. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so then at this point it gives me the option. Uh, basically, I could look at the crime scene again, but it'll cost additional time. Um, and the app traps tracks how much time you spend on things. So, um, yeah. So right now I'm thinking I don't want to spend any more time looking at it. Um, so I'm going to say no to that. Okay. So, um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to look at this deck of cards. This deck of cards has different like categories of clues. And so I'm going to look through this deck and I'm going to see if there's any of these categories of clues that I saw at the crime scene. All right. So there were some signs and symbols, but nothing that really looked important. Um, there was definitely a lot of trash. There was, let's see, there was a, a bag. Um, hmm. Okay, I don't know if the knife that I saw would count as a kitchen utensil. I believe there was a camera, like a, a security camera kind of thing. Um, which actually could be this card, photos and cameras, or it could be high-tech devices. Um, there was definitely some keys on the ground. Okay, I think melee weapon, probably for the knife. There was some liquids, there was like some water on the ground or something. There was definitely blood. Um, I didn't see any footprints, really. There were some papers, and I didn't see any food. All right, so now what I can do is I can scan these to see if there was anything relevant. So, um, I mean, obviously the melee weapon, I think. There could be fingerprints on the knife or something like that. So we're going to scan that, see what we find. A knife covered with blood, probably the murder weapon commonly seen in assaults, but the fact that it is a professional kitchen knife is notable. All right, so that is definitely a useful uh, clue, and that probably eliminates this uh, kitchen utensils clue, I think. Um, let's see, what else? I, I feel like there was def I, I feel like there was a security camera there, and that would definitely be important if there was. So let's try photos and cameras. Okay, we don't find anything that looks like that. Okay, 
but what about high-tech devices? Maybe they categorized it under that. Nope. Okay. All right. So I guess I was mistaken about security cameras. Um, well, there's definitely blood. The victim must have taken a while to die. There's a lot of blood on the ground, but there should be enough left in the body for the doctor to work with. Okay. All right. So that was an important clue. It was definitely a bag of some kind. So let's scan that one. The vic this is the victim's bag. His wallet is missing. All right. That was an important clue. Um, there was definitely some keys on the ground that might be important. You have a bunch of keys. One is the car key and there's another that seems to be used often but you don't know what it is for. Okay, so that was an important clue. Um, there was papers on the ground. Hard to know if those were important. Flyers and old papers, nothing pertinent to the case. Ah, here's an event. Food Detective just tweeted, Get ready for revelations. Today you'll know everything about Chef Ajiko's death. Hashtag police trailing behind. Bah. Okay. Um, so this was an important... I don't think any of these other things are really going to be important. The trash... Well, the signs and symbols, I'm pretty sure those weren't important. Um, small chance there was something important in the trash. Garbage and trash bins, disgusting and totally useless for the investigation. Okay, that figures. And I'm thinking probably, uh, I don't think there's anything important with the liquids, but let's just see. Nope, nothing there. Okay. All right, so the clues that we have are keys, the bag, the blood, and the knife. All right, so what's up next? There's nobody here to talk to. So I guess we should probably go talk to his wife. That seems like the smart thing to do. Um, but you know what, before we do that, I'm gonna consult with our criminologist, okay? And the criminologist is able to tell us about people. What leads do you have, detectives? Maybe I can help you to think it through. So let's just ask him um, about the wife and see if he has any opinions about her. She is a cold and manipulative woman whose sole interests are success and money. It would be surprising if she were content just with her husband and didn't have a lover. Okay. So she's cold and manipulative. Um, that feels very cliche, but anyway, um, so she could be the culprit or if she had a lover, her lover could have decided to off the chef or the chef could have decided to off the lover and things didn't go well for him. Either way, it is interesting that the knife was a kitchen knife, so he, the, the chef could have been intending to do in the lover, and then the lover defended himself. I don't know. Possible. Okay, um, let's see if he has anything to tell us about the chef. He says, it's hard to talk about a dead man, but it sounds like this creative and strong-willed man had become less and less committed to his work. Interesting. And we'll just see if he has anything to say about this blogger guy. A very smart man who is only after easy success. You will most likely find a way to negotiate with him if he causes any trouble. All right. Okay. Um, well, let's talk to the scientist about the murder weapon and see if she has any thoughts on that. Yeah, let's have her analyze the murder weapon. The blood on this weapon matches the victims. The knife is one of a series that was specifically designed for John Gordon, who's number 43. This guy.
Hmm. Okay, another person of interest. The fingerprints have been wiped clean except one of Gordon's fingerprints, which is very easy to recognize. Well, that seems a little suspicious. Why would there be, why would they have been wiped clean but left him? Seems like they're trying to set him up. All right, and let's see if she has any observations about the, the bag. The shoulder strap is not torn. He probably just dropped it before he collapsed on the floor. Okay, and the keys. Our analysis did not allow us to find any further clues about these keys. Did you ask his wife if she knew what they are for? Okay. All right, well, it seems like going to talk to the wife is the next thing to do. So let's travel to Soho. Are you sure you want to exit interrogation mode and move to the Flavor Palace? Yes. All right, the Flavor Palace, the victim's restaurant. You are greeted by his widow, Shannon Ajiko, and you notice a waitress in the middle of a discussion with blogger food detective. All right, so he's there, and also this waitress. The waitress is number six. Okay. I'm not going to label her yet because I don't know her name. So we'll see if we find out her name. Okay. Well, I'm slightly curious about the waitress and the food detective, but I think I'm more interested in talking to the wife. So let's go see what she has to say. Why do I have the feeling that I'm not going to like your questions, detective? Hmm, good question. Why do I, you have that feeling? All right, well, let's ask her about her husband. That loser completely ruined us. It's not a reason to kill him, but nobody will miss him except his lenders and stupid Jenny. Jenny is the name of the waitress. Okay. Hmm. All right, let's see. Well, since she mentioned Jenny, what does she have to say about Jenny? Uh, Jenny was hovering around Akira. If he had at least cheated on me, I could have asked for a divorce and got out of there with dignity. Okay. So she doesn't like Jenny because it seems like Jenny was interested in her husband, but her husband didn't actually cheat on her. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's see what she has to say about the keys. The keys to his bloody office. He doesn't let anyone set foot in that place. You can search it if you like. Hmm. After you're done with questioning, you can now search for clues in the chef's office. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask her about, uh, I mean, the, you know what? I'm going to ask her about the, the weapon, the murder weapon, see what she says. That's a kitchen knife. Knives like that can be found in all kitchens. Okay. So she doesn't, either she doesn't recognize that it's a special knife or she doesn't want to say anything about it being a special knife. All right, and the bag? Yes, it's my poor Akira's handbag. That's where he keeps his wallet and his keys. Have you found them? Well, we found his keys, but not his wallet. So his wallet should be somewhere. That could be an important clue if we can find it. Um, let's see if she knows anything about this uh, John Gordon guy. Yes, he's my lover. So what? Doesn't a woman deserve to be happy? Why would that make me a monster? Is it my fault if Akira became poor? No, of course not. Food detective just tweeted, will the investigation lead us to the trail of the mysterious secret ingredient of the truffle sushi with morals? At any rate, the case is moving forward. Hashtag police trailing behind. Hashtag cops slagging behind. All right. 
Hmm. Okay, so Shannon uh, has a lover who is this guy, John Gordon. <sighs> All right. But it seems unlikely that he is the bad guy because the fingerprints were wiped off of the knife except for one of his fingerprints that was very clear. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Okay. Well, I think we're done talking to her. So let's say goodbye. Let's search for clues. Um, all right. In the office. So here we go. Okay, there's some food there, there's some magazines, some receipts, a computer, some photos, a telephone. What else? Some books, some papers on the floor. Looks like spilled something. Some paintings. Oh, that paintings, both of those paintings are pretty crooked. It's kind of weird. Oh, there's a teddy bear. That's different. Anything on the ceiling? Nope. And we are running out of time. Okay. Oh. I accidentally hit it again. Uh, okay. Well, I'll just look around again and see. Again, just food, some photos, computer, maybe some receipts. A bottle of something, some papers on the floor, some photos, or some like artwork on the walls. The teddy bear really stands out. It's got some nice calyx shells. If he was a board gamer, good. That's a some good shells for a board game collection. Um, a lot of his shelves are empty. I don't think that's relevant, but okay. Yep. All right. So let's see what we have to look for. Um, so there was like something spilled on the floor. There were definitely a lot of papers. Um, high tech devices, I think, for computers. There were some photos. Um, there was a teddy bear, which might be under games and toys. There were some books and magazines. Oh, computer devices, probably instead of high tech devices. That would make more sense. There was a telephone, so communication devices. Um, there were some decorative decoration items. There was a bottle, and there was definitely food. All right, so we had some things here. Um, what do I want to look at first? Well, I think the teddy bear definitely stood out and seemed out of place. So let's scan that. In the bin, you find a pink stuffed toy covered with hearts and glitter. Keep cool is written on its belly. All right. So that's an important clue. Um, computer devices. There's definitely a computer there. The victim's computer. All his recipes seem to be there, but the files are encrypted. You would need an expert to learn more about it. Okay. Good. There was a bottle of something, and it looked like maybe something had spilled on the ground. So let's scan that. You find a bottle of cough syrup, it's open. Maybe the chef was sick. Okay. Um, communication devices. Let's see if he had maybe like some uh, messages on his answering machine or something. An old phone that seems to be used regularly. All right, that one's also possibly important. Um, 
don't think the photos were probably important. The food may have been important. Let's take a look at the food. Some of yesterday's leftovers. It looks a lot like the dish that made the chef famous. Truffle sushi with morals. It's a relevant clue. Um, papers. There were definitely a lot of papers. Let's see what we can learn about them. You find the restaurant's ledgers. Without even digging into the details, it is quickly obvious that the celebrity alone can't pay the bills. One name comes up often when it comes to the restaurant's significant debts. Haresi Unlimited, which is at location K. Okay. All right. Let's make a note of that. Heresy Unlimited. And so this is when it comes to their significant debts. So they're buying a lot from this place, Heresy Unlimited, whatever that is. Okay. All right. Anything else here? I don't think so. Um, books and magazines, liquids. I think the bottles covered the liquids thing. Um photos. Look like there were some photos on like his desk maybe, but I don't think they were significant. Decoration items. It was kind of weird that all of his paintings were like askew. The books and magazines I think were just clutter. I don't think there was anything significant to them. Um, let's just take one quick look at the, the decoration items. You find several decorative objects, but nothing really useful. All right. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, we have his computer and his phone. And the food. The scientist might have something to say about the food, and the hacker might have something to say about the computer and the phone. So let's go to the hacker. Talk to him. And let's ask him about the computer. I've tried everything, but his encryption is too strong. All I can tell you is that an email exchange between Chef Achiko and Michael Forsthar, number 39. that guy. Another person of interest. All right, so emails, email exchanges, an email exchange between Chef Ajiko and Michael Forstar makes me think that the latter may know the code. If you bring the password to me, you'll have access to the chef's culinary secrets. Well, I don't know that I need that, <laughs> but okay. All right, and then let's see about the, uh, the phone. A very conventional phone. I checked the last number called and it's a restaurant restaurant on the docks, the Rockfish. The call lasted several minutes. Okay, so that's location P. And the name of the restaurant is the Rockfish. Alrighty. Okay, I don't think I have anything else to ask him about. 
So let's say goodbye to him and let's go to the scientist. Okay. And let's see what she has to say about the food. That dish was made on the day of the victim's death. We tried to further our analysis in order to find all its ingredients, but we're missing some elements. Okay, not terribly useful. Um, oh, let's see if she has anything to say about the, uh, the teddy bear. A cheap, a cheap stuffed toy. DNA traces of the victim and of Jenny Stackhouse can be found on it. So Jenny is the waitress, okay? Sort of expected that. Hmm. Anything else we want to talk, ask the scientist about? Uh, maybe the cough medicine. It's an ordinary cough syrup. It can be bought off the shelf. Okay. All right. I think that's all we're going to get from her. Um, hmm. Well, I guess maybe let's talk to the criminologist. See what he can tell us about some of these people. Um, let's talk about this Gordon guy first. An arrogant and ambitious man whose sole motivation is to prove that he is the best, whatever it takes. His restaurant, Nirvana, is one of the most famous in London. That is on location F. So that's probably where we'll find him if we want to question him. Got a lot of locations out here now. Okay, and let's see if he knows anything about this Michael Forstar. A sensitive and considerate man, yet he will avoid anything that might upset his daily routine. Okay, not terribly helpful. Um, does he know anything about Jenny? What can he tell us about her? A brave but fragile and dreamy girl who seems to have developed an unhealthy obsession with her employer. Some people would call that love, but I think it is more than that. She almost idolizes him. Uh... On the one hand, you would think that would make it unlikely that she is the culprit, but on the other hand, sometimes obsession can lead to extreme actions. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, I think we've got all the information we can get here, so it's time to go somewhere else. We've been to the crime scene, we've been to his restaurant. Well, let's go... Well, John Gordon's fingerprint was on the murder weapon. And while I don't actually think he's the criminal, it seems like questioning him would be the next logical move. So we go to his restaurant, Nirvana. As soon as you arrive at Nirvana, John Gordon's flashy restaurant, you notice a customer who is about to leave, but looks like he would like to talk to you. And this customer is number 52, which is this guy. Don't know his name. Food detective just tweeted, funny to see that the police keep arriving after me. No wonder justice is so slow in this country. Hashtag going viral, hashtag cop slagging behind. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's talk to this guy who looks like he wants to talk to us. His name is Arthur Spoon. Arthur 
Are you the ones investigating Ajiko's murder? I hope you won I hope you won't waste Chef Gordon's time with that nonsense. That's all he had to say? What? Okay, well I'm assuming that Chef Gordon is there, so let's talk to him next. Oh, we're asking oh I'm sorry, we're asking Arthur about Chef Gordon. Okay, it's Arthur's opinion is he's an absolute genius and the trendy chef of the moment. No one else measures up to him. I eat at his restaurant as often as I can. Okay. And let's ask him about uh, Chef Ajiko. Uh, he says he's a total has-been. He challenged Chef Gordon to a duel a few days ago. I saw him charge into the kitchen. Nobody could stop him. And then I heard them yell. I believe Mrs. Ajiko had something to do with it. All right, whatever. And let's see if he knows anything about this Michael Forstar, a so-called food critic. He knows nothing about food and is not even able to recognize pure genius when it's on his plate. Okay, so Michael is a food critic. It sounds like this Arthur guy is also a food critic. He says, can you imagine? He finds that Ajiko's truffle sushi with morals is better than Gordon's roasted quail with shea butter and gorana, a fool. Hmm. Um, all right, let's see what he, if he knows anything or has anything to say about the wife. A beautiful woman, I saw her hovering around Chef Gordon more than once. Okay. All right, this Arthur guy doesn't seem like he has anything else useful to say. All right, so let's see if Gordon is there, if we can talk to him. Yes, he is there. And he says, I guess you're here to ask me questions about Ajiko. Even in death, the guy still wastes my time. All right, let's ask him about, well, uh, we'll ask him about Aji uh, the Ajiko says, oh, come on, if I were to kill the husbands of all the women I sleep with, the population of London would drop by half. Man, what a jerk. Okay. Um, we'll ask him about this Shannon. Okay, I may have slept with her a couple of times, but why would that make me a murderer? Okay. Let's ask him about this Jenny character. I caught that nosy snoop in my kitchen think she wanted to go through my trash, but I scared her. She won't come back for sure. Huh. Okay, go through his trash, and it gives us a clue. Number 35, which is trash. All right, interesting. Let's ask him about that. Why would she go through your trash? Uh, don't you think I have better things to do? Okay, he doesn't want to talk about that. All right, let's ask him about this food. We found that food the other day. It's his most famous dish, a complete joke compared to my roasted quail with shea butter and guana. Some people would kill to know his recipe secret, but I have better things to do. Huh. Interesting. So my brain is going to the fact that this guy seem to be obsessed with that particular dish. But would he kill for it? That seems unlikely. Especially since the email seemed to suggest that he would be the guy who could decode the stuff in the computer. So that makes it seem like It'd be much easier if he needed to, to just steal the computer and decode the stuff. So, to get the recipe, if he was that desperate for the recipe. Certainly doesn't need to kill the guy for the recipe. That's absurd. Okay. All right. Um, does he know anything about this guy who eats there so often? He has lunch here almost every day, otherwise I guess you can find him at home, which is location in. Okay. Yeah, lots of more locations.
All right, so for now I'm going to swap this in for the crime scene because I don't know that we'll be going to the crime scene again for anything. Okay. Hmm. All right, I don't think there's too much else to do here. So let's be on our way. Um... So his last phone conversation was with this restaurant in the Docklands. And his greatest outstanding debt was to someplace here. So let's go look here and see who he owed money to. That's probably significant, maybe. Haresi Unlimited Headquarters. Vito Haresi, number 24, welcomes you in those big, intimidating offices. His smile seems anything but sincere. Hmm. Okay. That is the guy. Wow. He's not scary looking at all. Like, I doubt he's a bad guy. All right, well, let's talk to him. My name is Vito Haresi. I'm a small businessman. Well, what can you tell me about Akira? He's dead? That's a pity. I used to eat at the Flavor Palace from time to time, and his truffle sushi with morals was truly unique. That's all you got to say about it? Uh, all right, well, the papers were the ledger, right? So let's ask him about that. Success tends to turn heads. Ajuko expanded too quickly, so he had to borrow money. What can I say? I'm always there to help people in need. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's ask him about the guy's wife, just in case. He might know something. He says, we talked on a few occasions, and she wanted me to help her husband get back onto his feet. I'm someone who likes helping people. Really? Okay, what about John Gordon? A famous chef, I eat at his restaurant Nirvana from time to time. His roasted quail and shea butter and Karana and Gorana is pure delight. Mm. All right, what about this Michael guy? He's kind of a mystery. A food critic, I think. What about this Arthur Spoon guy? Are you going to show me the face of all morons in this city? <laughs> okay. Um, man, this seems like a dead end. Anything else I could ask him about? I don't think so. I don't know what else he would know about. Maybe the weapon? I don't know. That seems like a bit far-fetched, but... She says, not very original. Okay. And now there's an event. Agents have just arrested a tramp, number 41, who was found with the victim's wallet. You can interrogate him at Scotland Yard. 41. All right, so this is the guy who was just found with the wall, and he is back at Scotland Yard. Okay. Hmm. All right, well, we could question. I don't think we're going to get anything else here, so let's say goodbye to Vito. Hmm. All right, so some thoughts. We could go back, we could question the tramp. We could ask Jenny about 
the trash. Why was she going through the trash at Nirvana? We could also ask her about the teddy bear. See if she's got anything to say about that. I have a feeling that the tramp is a red herring. Like if we go talk to the tramp, he's just going to be like, yeah, I found this wallet in the garbage or something like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm really feeling like maybe that's a red herring. Or maybe they're trying to throw us a bone because it's already four o'clock in game time. Hmm. All right, well, let's talk to that guy, I guess. So we'll go back to uh, Scotland Yard. And we'll try and talk to this tramp. He says, I was sleeping in the alley last night when I heard a cry of pain. There was a man and a woman. I couldn't really see what they were doing. The man fell on the ground. Then she dropped the knife and ran away. Hmm. When I went to check on him, he was bleeding to death. His wallet was sticking out of his bag, and I knew he wouldn't need it anymore, so I couldn't resist. Man, you didn't call an ambulance or something? I mean, I understand your thought on the wallet, I guess, but I could have at least called an ambulance for the guy. All right, so this guy's name is Robert Cunning. Okay. All right, so it's all making me think there was a woman there. I don't think Shannon did it kind of weird that Jenny would do it, but I could see why Jenny, maybe Jenny was going through Gordon's trash to get something from which she could extract his fingerprint. So if she got his fingerprint and planted it on the knife and then killed the chef, Because she seemed obsessed with the chef, so she wouldn't be too happy about Gordon uh, having an affair with Shannon. Because that's probably going to be upsetting to Akira. So if she's obsessed with Akira, she might want to blame Gordon for the death. But I still don't know why she would necessarily kill Akira. I don't know. Um, let's ask Robert Cunning, since we're talking to him, let's ask him about Jenny and see if he's like, yeah, that's the girl. As I told you, it was dark. I only saw her briefly from afar and with her back turned to me. So yes, she could be the one who was in the alley. Okay. And he's probably going to say something similar about Shannon. Let's just see. I guess she could be the one who was arguing with the victim. It was dark. She was far away and had her back turned to me. Hard to say. All right. He had more to say about the possibility of it being Jenny, but um, either way, he's being kind of like ambiguous. All right. Well, I think the next thing to do is to talk to Jenny because whether or not she's the culprit, we can ask her, what's the deal with the toy? What's the deal with the trash. Those are probably the two big questions that I have. Okay, so let's say goodbye to Robert Cunning. Let's go back to Soho. And let's see if we can talk to her. She says, I'm Jenny Stackhouse. I've been lucky enough to work at the Flavor Palace for almost five years now. Mr. Ajiko is an amazing man, and his death is a real tragedy. Sure. Let's see what she has to say about him first. What does she have to say about Akira? That's my employer, a good and talented man who hired me five years ago. Recently, he didn't seem to feel like working anymore because of his debts, his wife, and his dwindling clientele. 
It's horrible what happened to him. Okay. Um, I mean, I feel like, well, we could ask about the wife. We could ask about John Gordon. But let's just cut to the chase. Let's ask her about the teddy bear and the trash. So about the teddy bear, she says, yes, it's from me. He was feeling a bit down lately, and I wanted to cheer him up, but I didn't have, but it didn't have the effect I expected. He told me I would have to do much more to help him. Hmm, interesting. Okay. He was right. It wasn't a suitable gift. Only my devotion could help him, so he would always be remembered as the great man he never ceased to be. Okay, so it sounds like she did something crazy. See what she says about the trash. Er, no, I, the chef, Ming, the guy, who's dead, the chef had asked me to do it. I didn't do anything wrong, really. Just took a few things to annoy Gordon. Took a few things to ignore, annoy him. Hmm. Okay. How about the melee weapon? Is that one of the things that she took? Because that was especially made for him. Is that the murder weapon? How dreadful. Nope. Uh, hmm. Let's ask her about the food, just because. The chef often ate in his office so he could relax. I love this dish. It's his truffles and truffle sushi with morals. I get why it's so famous. Hmm. Not useful. Um, hmm. Okay, what can she tell me about this Michael guy? He is a food critic, I believe. I caught him arguing with Mr. Ajiko a few days ago. You should probably talk to him about it at his office, which is location G. Okay, another location. All right, so we'll just set that aside for the moment. Okay. Um, well, we'll ask her about Shannon just because. This is my boss's wife, an unbearable and incompetent woman. Mr. Ajiko doesn't say anything, but I'm sure he found out that she's cheating on him with John Gordon, Nirvana's chef. Okay. Does she have anything to say about this John Gordon? That's Nirvana's chef, and furthermore, Mrs. Ajiko's lover. It broke Mr. Ajiko's heart, though he did his best to hide it. It's awful cheating on such a nice man. Okay, what about this Arthur Spoon guy? He just seems like an anomaly. She doesn't know anything about him. Hmm. Okay, does she know anything about this Vito guy? He's a regular customer. I caught Mr. Ajiko talking to him one night. He makes my blood run cold. So she's scared of him, but that's it. Hmm. Well, I don't know why Vito would kill him, because it seemed like he owed Vito a lot of money. So killing him doesn't necessarily seem to be in his best interest. Because then how's he going to get his money back? Unless, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe life insurance would kick in and then Shannon would get a bunch of money that she has to use to pay off his debts. But there was definitely a woman involved. We only have two culprit or two... Uh, suspects so far that are women. Okay, well what we haven't looked into is we haven't gone to Michael's office to talk to him, we haven't gone to Arthur Spoon's home to talk to him, and we haven't visited the Rockfish, which is the last place that Akira Ajiko called. Well, I think that's probably that's probably our best bet. So let's go there.
When you arrive at the Rockfish, you notice that the restaurant's chef, Carmen Lassiter, is very busy in her kitchen, which opens onto the dining room. So, another character. Oh, and this is another woman. So, another possible suspect. Carmen Lassiter. She's at this location. Okay. When you arrive at the Rockfish, you bump into Food Detective, who is about to leave. Okay. You are getting an anonymous call on your phone, and it tells me uh, here bring out the star card which are special cards so the special card number three which is this all right the mysterious caller's voice is unrecognizable he invites you to go to the warehouse at 40 lemon street which is location h Yet another location. Oh, nope, that's the same place. That's where the crime scene is. Huh. At 9 p.m. to find out more about the murder. Hmm. Interesting. 9 p.m. And right now it is 6 p.m. in game. So, three hours from now. Interesting. Okay. All right, so in the rockfish, let's see. Eh, let's talk to the food detective before he leaves. I haven't spoken to this guy yet. You still hanging on? Do you realize I'm about to publish my article with a solution to your mystery? Hmm. All right. What do we do with this guy? Is there anything we want to talk to him about? I guess we'll talk to him about the chef to start with the guy who's dead. His reputation is not really what it used to be, but still, if I solve this case before you, I should get a few million views. Not as much as if I had cracked the secret of his truffle sushi with morals, but now that he's dead, that's something the world will never know. Okay. Ask him what he thinks about John Gordon. The huge John Gordon, chef of the prestigious Nirvana. His death would probably have been a better event, but you take what you can get. Hmm. All right. Uh, what does he think about her? Chef Ajika's wife. Surely she's. Surely she must have some juicy information for my fans. Okay. What about Jenny? A waitress always knows things, but I'm not going to teach you how to do your job. The chief officer is calling you. Well, I know you should have finished work for the day, but that bloody blogger seems to have a lead and we aren't going to let a civilian embarrass us. So today you work until you provide a plausible suspect. The clock is ticking. Anything else we want to talk to this food detective about? Maybe the food that we found? Ah, the truffle sushi with morals. One of my first culinary raptures. If only I had managed to unravel its mystery. Now that would be headline news. Let's ask him about the computer. Do you have his recipes? Maybe we could work something out. The secret ingredient of his truffle sushi with morals could be worth a fortune. I could leave you alone if I had it. Hmm. Let's ask him about this Michael guy. 
an old school journalist. He probably has some good information, but he doesn't realize that he is out of his depth. Well, since we're here, let's talk to this uh, Carmen, or let's ask him about Carmen. Chef Lassiter, new in the field, but she's promising. All right, I don't know that this guy's gonna have anything else useful for me. Um, yeah, let's just say goodbye to him. All right, let's talk to this Lassiter woman. My name is Carmen Lassiter, and I've been working at the Rockfish for five years now. I have enough saved to buy my own restaurant, but not so much that I can afford to screw it up. All right, we'll ask her what she knows about the guy who died. I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't on good terms with the chef. I made a very reasonable takeover proposal for his restaurant. He wouldn't listen and called me a vulture. So yes, it got me. it got to me but not to the point of slaughtering him in an alley. Hmm. She doesn't have a lot of money, which means she may have gone to this Vito guy for help. I've heard rumors, stories that he's involved in dirty dealings of some sort. In my opinion, a good chef doesn't need to be friendly with people like that. Okay. What about John Gordon? Does she have any thoughts on him? Who doesn't know of Chef Gordon and his Nirvana? I can't imagine him murdering a Chico, but both men were rivals, that's for sure. Hmm. Does she know anything about this Michael guy? A food critic. I know him a bit. He gave me excellent grades. He's the one who put me in touch with a Chico. Any knowledge of Shannon? Never got to meet her. I hope she's more open than he was. Huh. Interesting. So it sounds like now she has still some interest in buying a Jico's restaurant. She might take that up with Shannon. If the restaurant owes a bunch of money to this Vito guy then they might be willing to sell the restaurant to her to get out of those debts. It's just kind of strange because she doesn't seem like she would kill the guy. Maybe Shannon wants to get out of the debts. So she would like to sell the restaurant to Carmen. But Akira wouldn't go along with it. So she killed Akira to get him out of the way so that she could then sell the restaurant to Carmen and pay off her debts to Vito. But would she frame John Gordon for that? It doesn't seem like it. It seems like she still has a good relationship with John Gordon, although John Gordon mentioned that he's sleeping around with a lot of different women. So if Shannon found out about that, maybe she's not happy with that. So she decided to knock off her husband and frame her lover that she's not happy with. It's still suspicious that Jenny was going through Gordon's stuff. Uh, hmm. I don't know, it's weird. Well, we're talking to Carmen. Is there anyone else we want to ask? Let's ask Carmen about this Jenny girl, just to see if she knows anything about her. 
She says, I don't really want to talk about that crazy woman. Ajiko might have been a bit snappish, but she treated me as if I planned to turn the restaurant into a parking lot. Huh. Alright, well, if Jenny thought that Akira dying would result in Shannon selling the restaurant to Carmen, then it seems like Jenny would never have killed Akira, even whatever other weird, crazy reason she may have had to do that. Uh, so I think we can rule out Jenny. Seems like either Carmen or Shannon, and out of the two of them, it seems like Shannon has the most reason to, although I don't know why she would frame John Gordon. But maybe Shannon actually killed Akira. And then Jenny knew enough about the situation that she could come in and frame Gordon before the police found the scene. I don't know. Hmm. Well... Okay, I don't think we're going to get anything else out of Carmen, so let's stop talking to her. Um, I feel like we should ask the criminologist about Carmen, because we haven't done that, and maybe ask him about Vito as well. So let's do that. Uh, criminologist. Let's ask him about Carmen. A determined woman, it's better not to stand in her way. Okay. And then Vito. A dangerous man, he's heavily involved in mafia networks, and his companies are only there to hide his real activities and launder money. He is cunning and has never been directly implica implicated. He will probably not tell you anything useful unless he's backed into a corner. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. And what time is it now? 7.20 in game. So we still have more than an hour and a half. Um, hmm. All right. Well, I guess maybe my next good lead is maybe Michael uh, Forstar, which he might be at his office in Notting Hill. Um, anyone else we should ask the criminologist about while we're at it? I don't think so. I think we've, we're kind of up to date on him. All right, so let's say goodbye to the criminologist. Let's talk to the hacker about this uh, phone call that we received and see if he can tell us anything about that. The call was made from a disposable phone that had just been purchased. I managed to find the credit card that was used to buy it and it's Michael Forstars. Okay, so it seems like he's definitely the next person we need to talk to. All right, let's not waste any more time and go do that. One other thing I'm curious about, though, is we found we found the blood on the body. And we haven't talked to the doctor about that. And there's probably nothing to learn about it, really. But let's just give that a shot real quick. Um, so let's first of all, let's ask him about the victim. The victim died from five stab wounds around midnight last night. He must have taken about an hour to die. A small detail is still bothering me, though. Could you come back in three hours so I can do some further analysis? Three hours? Yeah, okay. Food Detective just tweeted, 
going viral, young Carmen Lasseter has a fiery temperament. Guess she didn't appreciate a Jico refusing to sell his restaurant. Give up your motive. Or hashtag give up your motive. Hashtag cops trailing behind. He thinks it's Lasseter. I don't think it's Lasseter. Um, okay, and we were going to ask the doctor too about the blood. I know you are under pressure, detective, but I can't get ahead of myself. You'll have to wait some more. Okay. All right. Okay. Hmm. Well, all right. So let's go to Notting Hill and talk to the guy there. So we'll uh, swap that out for Arthur Spoon's home. I don't know that we need to go back and talk to him about anything. All right. The Little Michelin Guide offices. In a studious yet friendly atmosphere, you can meet critic Michael Forstar, who is busy writing. When you arrive at the Michelin Guide premises, you find Food Detective 34, uh, Food Detective, flirting with the receptionist. Sure. All right, so let's talk to this Michael guy. Hello, I am Michael Forstar, critic at the prestigious Little Michelin Guide. Chef Ajiko was a great man, and I will do my best to help you. So let's ask him about the phone call that he apparently made. Okay, the anonymous call came from me. I really want to help you, but you don't understand how risky it is for me. Vito Haresi is the one who organizes the chef duels. He's a dangerous man connected to the Mafia. I'd rather he didn't know that I snitched on him, but I'm sure that he killed the chef. Really? Hmm. Um. Hmm. Okay, so what do we want to ask him about? Uh, we want to ask him about the computer, because the computer had coded information and he might have the code. I had forgotten that story. Yes, I had guessed his password. It's the opening date of his first restaurant. However, I have to confess I don't remember it. Bah! You're useless. Hmm. All right, let's ask him about John Gordon. Nirvana chef, an arrogant man. He has a lot of talent, but he believes he is better than he actually is. That's why he will never be an authentic chef like a Jiko. Okay, what about Carmen? The chef at Rockfish, a promising woman. She could dethrone Gordon if she could lead a prestigious restaurant like the Flavor Palace. I'm convinced this tragedy could have been avoided if Ajiko had managed to reach an agreement with her. Hmm. So he seems to think that this Vito guy over here killed Ajiko. And there's some kind of like chef duels that are happening. And the veto guy is the one who organizes them. Seems like Carmen wanted nothing to do with the veto guy. And I don't remember about John Gordon, but I don't get the impression that John Gordon is interested in veto. So it could be that maybe um, Vito was trying to organize this chef duel between Akira and John, and John wasn't interested, and because Akira couldn't convince John, somehow that put Akira on Vito's bad side, to whom he already owed a bunch of money. And so 
Vito had him knocked off. But, again, there was a woman at the crime scene. So it seems like the culprit is a woman. If Vito is somehow behind it, it seems like Carmen wouldn't want to be involved in that. Shannon has reason to be involved because her husband owed a bunch of money to Vito. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Well, anything else we want to ask Michael about? Let's ask him about this Arthur guy, because the Arthur guy seemed to know something about Michael. The less I see that relentless fanboy, the better. If he's not at Nirvana, you will probably find him at home. Huh. Okay. So he's just a fan of John Gordon. And if John Gordon and Akira Ajiko were rivals, I could see why he would maybe not want, you know, maybe have something ill against Akira, but that's not enough reason to knock him off. And again, it was a woman. So the question is, which of these three women had the most reason? Hmm. All right, anything else we want to ask Michael about? Maybe ask him about Shannon, just see what his thoughts on her are. She's only with him out of self-interest and always held him back. Their relationship was becoming increasingly strained. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on Jenny? She's one of the waitresses at the Flavor Palace, isn't she? She was there when Ajiko and I had our argument. She hated it when I contradicted her boss, and she was staring daggers at me. What did they argue about? I don't remember them... I don't remember learning about an argument between them. Did I already ask him about Akira? Okay. I did everything I could to stop him from taking part in that duel. I knew it would end badly. He wasn't good enough to face chef, face a chef like Gordon anymore, but he didn't want to listen. Okay, so there was a duel between him and Gordon. And I'm guessing it didn't go well. And I'm guessing but when they talk about duels between chefs, they're talking about their, like, cooking. It's like a cook-off, right? This isn't like Hamilton and Burr showing up in an alley to shoot at each other. So, okay. So they had some kind of cook-off duel. It didn't go well for Akira. I still don't think Carmen's involved. Like, she wants to buy the restaurant, but I don't think she'd kill someone for it. It leaves Shannon and Jenny. I feel like Shannon has the best motives, but it's strange that she would frame Gordon. Jenny would have reason to frame Gordon, but it seems a little extreme that she would kill Akira. I don't know. The only other thing that I'm thinking is maybe go back to Gordon. I can't remember now if I asked Gordon about Vito. So maybe I could go back and talk to Gordon and ask him about Vito and if, see if he gives me more information about this duel and what happened with that. 
All right, well, let's give that a try. So we got to go back to location F. As soon as you arrive at Nirvana, John Gordon's flashy restaurant, you notice a customer who is about to leave but would like to talk to you. Oh, that's the same thing we did earlier. Okay, so we can ignore that. We're going to talk to Gordon. And we're going to just ask him about uh, this guy, Vito. Okay, I may have participated in an underground cooking tournament organized by this guy, but I didn't do anything illegal. Yes, Ajiko was there, and the last time I saw him, he was alive. Okay, all right, so we confirm that that's what happened there. Um, did we ask him about the murder weapon? Because the murder weapon was specifically designed for this guy. Like, the, it was a knife. It was a set of knives specifically designed for him. Yes, it looks like one of my knives, but that doesn't mean anything. Anyone could have stolen it from the kitchen. All right, and they found Jenny in the kitchen. Uh, so... She could have had the knife. All right, let's just ask him about Carmen. I don't think I did that. I've heard about her, a chef who is trying to go in, into business. As long as she can settle for second place, I don't mind. Okay, so I'm really feeling like Jenny is the culprit because she was in Gordon's kitchen. She could have gotten a hold of his knife. She would have wanted to frame Gordon because she was mad at Gordon for having an affair with Akira's wife. It seems a little crazy that she would kill Akira if she's obsessed with him. Uh, but obsession makes people do weird things, so it's possible. And she could have been upset because she tried to give him this teddy bear to make him feel better, and he rejected that. So that could have been a thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, being objected, uh, being rejected by the person you're obsessed with can make a person do crazy things. So, um, all right, I think, I think that's probably what we're going to go with. Food Detective just tweeted, hashtag, did you know underground duels are organized between top chefs, potentially lethal dishes, high bets. Guess where Chef Ajiko was before he died. Hmm. Potentially lethal dishes. All right, so you know what? Let's ask John Gordon about the food. I'm just curious. Oh, I had already done that, and he just he doesn't have anything. Nothing interesting to say about that. Okay. Hmm. I feel like there's some little piece missing here. Something to do with the food. I think maybe Akira was somehow poisoned. Well, we're going to have to talk to the doctor, I think. Um, we'll say goodbye to him, see if the doctor has. Uh, we were waiting on him to do some additional research or something. Okay. See if he has anything to say about the food. Nope. See if he has anything to say about the blood. He still needs more time. You're going to tell me the same thing if I ask about the guy. Yep, okay. So it's too soon to ask him about any of that. Um, Alright, so let's say goodbye to him. Let's talk to the scientist real quick, see if she can tell me anything more about the food.
Nope. Nothing new there. Hmm. I don't know. I think I might, I mean, unless I just kill some time until the doctor can get back with me. I don't know that there's really anything else to do. Um, I'd like to hear the doctor's analysis before I try to solve the crime, I think. But... Let's talk to the criminologist about uh, the tramp. I don't think I've done that. A poor man who has already lost everything. I can't imagine him taking someone's life. He would already have confessed. Okay. Um, did we ask him about this guy? Arthur Spoon. A relentless fan who only appreciates his life through the success of his idols. Such people can be found in all circles, and this one seems to be particularly into top chefs. Hmm. I feel like that's a red herring. So whoever killed the chef didn't want anything from him, like from his person. Because they left his bag, they left his keys, his wallet was missing, but that's just because it got picked up by this tramp. So they weren't motivated by wanting anything off of his person. And... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems like... It, I think it's Jenny. Yeah, I think she just... Uh, she was obsessed with him. He kind of spurned her advances. And so she flipped out and killed him, trying to frame John, perhaps implicate Shannon and Carmen, since she doesn't like any of those people. Hmm. I wonder if Vito knows anything about Jenny. I don't know that he would, but since we've got to kill some time anyway, let's just ask him. That hair... Yeah. <clears throat> that airhead would do anything for a Jiko. On the other hand, I didn't understand why he asked me to give her the money from his participation in the duel. Ah. Okay. Found a clue. Food detective just tweeted, Gordon faced a Jiko in a duel and Chef A is found stabbed to death with one of Chef G's knives. Too easy? Yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. All right. So let's go back here and ask Jenny about that because that is a good question. What is that about? So, she says, why he gave me that money? How would I know? It's my consolation prize, I guess. And he was never going to give it to his harridan wife. He hated her, you know. She ruined him, cheated on him, drove him to lose the desire to cook. And me? Well, now I know that he didn't love me, but he needed me. I was ready to do anything for him. Hmm. Yeah, I feel more and more like... She's probably the culprit. 
But how did she... Well, huh. Okay. So he didn't love her, and she found that out. And I think the thing that kind of told him, told her that was maybe the fact that the, he rejected the teddy bear. That didn't mean anything to him. Let's ask her. Did we ask her about this food? Yeah. Um... Oh, you know what? So here's a crazy thought. What if the chef committed suicide? No, that doesn't quite make sense. But the chef could have asked Jenny to kill him. Because she would do anything for him. So if he asked her to kill him, because he was just... I mean, it sounds like he was a miserable man. And it could have been his way by by her tr killing him, but framing John Gordon and making it, you know, look like maybe John Gordon and Shannon were involved. Yeah, that makes more sense. I mean, it's crazy, but it makes more sense. All right. Yeah, I think, all right, let's check in with uh, this, the doctor one more time, see if he can tell me anything about this guy now. That's what I thought. The victim was poisoned with tetrodotoxin, which is number four, and I probably mispronounced that, but regardless. All right, so he was poisoned. And he would probably have died from it if his abdomen injuries hadn't killed him faster. Hmm. Okay. Uh, can we ask of him about that poison? Seems to me it's a poison of animal origin. You'd be better to talk to forensics about it. Okay. Um, so let's do that. Let's say goodbye to him. Let's talk to forensics. Let's ask her about the poison. It's a toxin that can be found naturally, known for being produced by the fugu, a fish that is edible but lethal if incorrectly prepared. Okay. All right, so he got poisoned in this chef's duel realized he'd been poisoned, decided rather than just allowing himself to die from the poison, he would have Jenny kill him with the knife that she stole from John Gordon so that it would look like John Gordon had killed him because he was rivals with John Gordon, both in business and for his wife. And that that's what happened. That's my theory. All right. I think we're ready to go back to HQ and see if we can solve this case. Um, actually, you know what? We're still here. We can talk to Jenny. Let's just ask her. She says, why do I have the feeling that you suspect me? Huh. I wonder. Let's ask her about the poison. When he tasted his dish, he knew he had failed its preparation. He warned me that he would probably die of the poison, but that didn't scare him anymore. It was truly heartbreaking to leave him like that, but it was his choice. Food Detective just tweeted, I am going to try and obtain a confession, but in one hour I will reveal who murdered Chef Ajiko. Whatever. All right. I think we've got it. So let's uh, say goodbye to her. Let's go back to HQ and let's try and solve the case. What was the murder weapon? Well, the actual murder weapon was the poison. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> it says no. Nope. All right, well, let's try that again. All right. Okay.
What was the murder weapon? All right. Well, I guess the murder weapon was technically the the knife. Who do you hold responsible for Akira Ajiko's death? Well, it was kind of him because he prepared the meal and didn't do it right. But I think Jenny stabbed him. All right, let's try let's try Jenny. All right, so now we got to scan like these different cards. Who could have bought the Flavor Palace and saved a Chico? Well, Carmen could have bought it. What is the secret ingredient ingredient of the famous truffle sushi with morals? What is the secret ingredient? Why does that matter? I mean, the poison was in it, but I don't think that's the secret ingredient. Who is Shannon Ajiko's lover? Well, that's John Gordon. What prompted Chef Ajiko to act the way he did? Um, I mean, I think it was the poison, basically. Oh, no, it was this guy. It was this guy's debts. Um, but should I... Maybe I'll do the papers? Okay, it says, Indeed, Jenny Stackhouse didn't hesitate one second to kill the man she loved when he asked her to. She is the murderer. All right, how did we do? Um, all right, so we didn't, we got four out of five stars. We didn't do great on time. Um, we didn't get the secret ingredient. We said it was the poison. I knew that wasn't right, but I don't know where the secret ingredient was or how we could have found it. Um, Okay, we said that Jenny was the culprit, and that was correct. Yeah, so basically the only thing we got wrong was um, the secret ingredient. Yeah, so we didn't figure out what the secret ingredient was. All right, let's, so let's read the solution. So here's the solution that they give us. Though he had reached the highest levels of his profession, Chef Ajiko couldn't handle the stress anymore. Trapped in a loveless marriage, he had lost his taste for cooking and was burdened with mounting debts from, from a declining restaurant. That's when Vito Haresi made him an offer he couldn't refuse. If he won an underground chef duel against his worst rival, he would earn enough to wipe his slate clean. He might lose his life, but if he got through, he would be able to start a new one. Gordon wasn't hard to convince. He was so arrogant that he didn't notice Ajiko stealing a knife from him, for the chef had his own plan. If he lost, he wanted his death to be meaningful, to serve his desire for revenge so that his rival would end up in jail and his wife would be heartbroken. He asked Jenny Stackhouse for help. The young waitress loved the chef blindly and didn't have the heart to deny him this last service. So after Ajiko had lost the duel and was likely to die due to the poison he had ingested after failing to prepare the fish properly, he stabbed, she stabbed him several times with Chef Gordon's knife before going home with a tidy sum of money. All right. Well, there you go. So, that is it. Let's go back up and talk about it a bit. So that's the uh, the case of, uh, what was that name of that case? Devil's Kitchen. That's that case. So that gives you a general idea of the game. Um, it uh, took probably about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes to play through all that. Um, that seems to be pretty
pretty typical for my experiences with the game, although actually that's probably the shortest game of this I've had. Um, the games tend to go a good bit longer. And overall that was an interesting case. Um, lots of little nuances to it. Felt like there was quite a few red herrings, and I'm not sure how we were supposed to figure out what the secret ingredient for the meal was, or why that even mattered. But that was one of the questions. So, um, yeah, so that's it. Well, anyhow, thanks for watching. Again, my name is Nathan. You're watching Nice at Dice. Thanks for following along as I solve this case. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.